Hello and welcome to What's Happening, a show where we discuss EV news around the world with Omkar and Manish. So, Manish, what's up? How's it going? All good. This is episode number two, season two. I think we're going to probably have to brand this the Ola show, I think, based <laughs> on the topics we have coming up. Yeah, it's very interesting because the last episode, technically, we recorded three weeks ago. And in those three weeks, the amount of news that have happened is just insane. Ola actually went on like a mission, I think, that they just wanted to capture this particular month um, you know net net started out with their event uh, sankalp then yeah. they also had the ipo ipo yeah uh, and they recently announced yesterday something related to ondc as well so we'll break all of these things down one one by one so let's just start with the event first then yeah so the event was sankalp 2024 and it was basically I personally feel like it was his roadshow before, you know, the big Ola Electric IPO listing. So they kind of broke it down into uh, three broad categories. One was talking about Ola cabs, which is now called Ola consumer. And that's all of the, uh, you know, delivery, all of that and ride sharing. So that was one. So we just talked a little bit about the metrics and things like that. That was one. Number two were all of the new vehicles that they're launching on the Ola electric side for Oda. Ola motorcycles was a new thing. So they mentioned they, uh, talked about the Roadster series, which is actually three. So the first is the Roadster X, which is a 2.5 to 4.5 kilowatt hour battery pack between 75,000 and one lakh. So that's this first one. Then the middle tier is the Roadster, and that is between one and 1.4 lakhs. And both of these are gonna be available, he says, shipping in January, 2025, so very soon. And then the high end is the Roadster Pro that is between two and two and a half lakhs. And that is the eight and 16 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack. So that was the second thing. And then the third piece was around uh, all the stuff they're doing around the battery cell technology. So they announced the bot cell 4680. So that is, you know, the size of the battery, 46. I think that's measured in centimeters. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. So that's what everybody talks about. The Tesla battery pack is a 4680. So now they're building their own version uh, down in South in, uh, called the 4680. So bot itself is what they, they talked about. So those are the three broad categories. And there was a fourth one, but that was more around the AI chips, uh, their, their cloud offering, the Ola Maps offering, all of that. But it was amazing. He kept on, you know, talking about new things and, you know, just kind of the innovation that he's doing is great pushing the envelope uh, i mean i i'm sure the stress level for him must be very high because he's <laughs> managing so many different things yeah uh, of course so let's talk about the bike sort of yep. segment first and that's a very interesting category here in india uh, not a lot of people are doing electric bikes there are my multiple startups who are doing scooters because that's a mass market product bike in a way was mass market if you get the pricing right and nobody in india got the pricing this particular pricing at 75000 nobody got it uh, so the, somebody like revolt was very close to this particular price at 99000 i think or 1 lakh when they initially launched i think now they are selling it at a little bit higher 1.3 or 1.2 lakhs uh, there was torque which was selling at 1.4 1.5 lakhs um, but this price is really really good and i this shared the renders of these particular bikes way before in the previous event and when i saw those particular renders i thought that this is never going to come into fruition because it is another one of those very futuristic looking EVs that uh, you know from a design perspective from a supply chain perspective you'll never be able to crack here or you would make them like a concept vehicle but you would never actually get those economies of scale to actually get that particular price point but he proved again all of us wrong and actually launched and so I think there are three uh, categories that he launched one was a daily sort of commuter like a naked bike an adventure bike and a cruiser I think uh, you know there are the three C particular variants and I love the fact that it is across the entire broad spectrum that's there here in India you know we have the commuter segment which is like 75,000 but you also have the premium segment now he's competing again with the likes of ultraviolet uh, at that uh, you know 16 kilowatt hour uh, battery you know size that's which, which is very interesting because I don't know how you're gonna fit that big of a battery on a bike but let's say with the new Bharat cell he actually might be able to achieve it so that's very very interesting he's just proving like everybody wrong every single month you know just a couple of uh, weeks ago we heard the announcement that they got the approval for the they got the PLI for manufacturing the scooter as well you know making them the only company 
who has the PLI for both, you know, manufacturing the cells as well as manufacturing the scooters, and that's pretty interesting. I mean, there's a lot of connotations about you know how the PLI is structured and how it is not helping actually the startups, and uh, I mean the lot of other side to it. Correct. But kudos to Ola to actually being you know uh, proving everybody you know aside and just getting that particular PLI, and which net net gonna help the consumer because the products will come at much uh, much cheaper. Lesser, yeah. yeah. So the PLI basically means that they need to have at least 50 percent local. Content, you know, you know, localization, as they say. So that means you just can't import something and then sell it. So this is, you know, because it's 50% localization, then they can kind of reduce the rates on other things anywhere from like 13 to 18%. So I'm sure there must be some GST bracket or something like that. But again, he's able to, you know, pass those savings onto the consumer. And then the more and more that he builds, he gets better pricing. So in the end, he does, you know, the company does end up making money. And again, you know, when you start building something like that, then you can kind of keep on iterating making it better and better and then getting feedback from the consumer and i definitely think you know the pli is a perfect example of him kind of shooting for the stars in certain areas and that's one of them getting a good relationship with the government you know so once they announced that you know he was kind of talking uh, at a couple different press conferences in delhi talking about it and i think that just shows you that he's got very good connections as far as you know very positive you know you know energy from the government saying hey this is great because it's helping the economy helping the country we're not just importing things as a CBU or a CKD. We're actually doing manufacturing in yeah. India. Yeah, and in, in all of this, in a way, led up to they actually doing the IPO. You know, getting yeah. listed on the NAC. And initially, the valuation that they wanted was, I think, somewhere about 10 billion. And I think at the end, they listed at six billion dollars. Six billion, yeah. yeah. So how how has the market been about this? So it it opened at 76 rupees. It popped. I mean, so it opened at 76. It hit a peak of about 150. And so here we are today, what, August 30th, it's trading around 120 rupees. Oh, wow. So not bad from 76 to 120. But but the truth is, you know, it may go down further or it may go up. I tell people it's a very similar story to uh, when you look at Paytm, you know, it, it went up then it went down. Uh, another example is Zomato is a perfect example. A year ago, everyone was like, this is the end of Zomato. You know, Deepinder doesn't know what he's doing. And if you look at the stock of where Zomato is today, actually it's doing great. But even more so as you look at the amount of products that he's releasing and he's pushing out. I know a lot of guys that are saying the speed at what he at what he's what he's executing at. It's almost like he must have hired the entire Blinkit team to kind of <laughs> because they're delivering stuff in 10 minutes. They're delivering stuff so quickly yeah, you yeah. Know, on the Zomato side and, yeah. and I, that's very similar to what i see on the ola side they're just they're just pushing 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 and that's what it takes it's all about execution so stock price doing well i'm not saying this is a recommendation to buy or sell i'm just saying thank god it's doing well and i think there'll definitely be a pop because at some point that stock will be in the ev index so there is a new new energy index for automotive automotive vehicles that the government has come out with or actually not the government, but uh, SNP um, has put that together. So I'm sure they will soon, le soon add all electric to that index, which means all the funds that are in that index will have to buy that company. So I'm sure that'll happen. All right. I think so. That's that's particularly very great. I think the entire month was in a way sort of themed as Ola. <laughs> Ola? Like I said, this could be the Ola show. Yeah, sure. it was the Ola show. But let's say now moving a bit away uh, from Ola, um, I think Canada had a very interesting uh, sort of regulation uh, recently. I think they are imposing, increasing the import duties on Chinese EVs. Um, I mean, there has been a very sort of big connotation among both European countries and US countries, um, you know, North American countries uh, towards import of Chinese EVs. Um, but this in a way came as a surprise because now Chinese Chinese government is also saying that, you know, this is not according to the the universal, like the world trade laws and all that stuff. So what's your take on uh, import of this? The regulations are starting October 1. Any Chinese uh, manufactured EV that comes into Canada will have 100% import duty, effectively making it uh, no one's going to buy it. That's the truth. We're kind of used to 100 plus import duties in India on high end cars like Ferraris, Lamborghinis and bikes but, and bikes. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but the truth is most countries like can't like large com countries like Canada, US, you know, Germany, they, they, they're not used to that. So it, by slapping 100 percent duty means that those cars will not be sold. And the idea is they want to protect. And so import duties, the whole idea is to protect the local economy, the local manufacturers. So there are a lot of uh, uh, car plants in Canada, a lot of car plants in, of course, 
uh, US and Mexico as well. So the entire North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, it covers everything. So the idea is if this didn't happen, the cars like BYD would sneak into Canada, let's say it's zero in percent, zero percent duty, and then make their way to the U.S. very easily. By blocking that now, now they can kind of say, wait a minute, let's, you know, let's let's take a step back. And the truth is very tough to compete against BYD because there are over 140 EV manufacturers in China. So there's a lot of people. There's, a, there's just a lot of activity. It's almost like the amount of activity that's happening in AI in Silicon Valley. That's what's happening in the EV space in China. There's just a ton of companies and they're all just making one they're all one-upping each other but it makes the traditional manufacturers like ford look really bad you know ford had an ev you know, program going for a while they just announced they've lost close to five billion dollars on that yeah. so five that's forty thousand crore that is not chump change you know exactly. so that hurts so so that's the problem is so now they want to kind of say wait a minute we want to kind of protect our own before we let chinese come in because once they come in they'll flood the market mm -hmm. but they are going to con countries like australia new zealand uh, uh vietnam byd uh, even india does have it uh, of course they do have you know export controls they've got some import duties in place but uh, but th the truth of the matter is this is not something new this, as I was mentioning to you when we were, before we started taping, is in the 80s, this happened with uh, Japanese cars coming into the U.S. So this was, you know, the oil crisis happened in the 70s. So everyone stopped buying muscle cars and they started towards more fuel efficient Japanese cars. And everyone wanted a Japanese car at that time. So the, the flood of cars coming from Japan was just too much. And so at that time, they couldn't do import duties because that, at that time look, would look really bad and everyone was trying to play fair with each other. So they, in, uh, so uh, China, or so Japan actually had their own thing called voluntary export restraint. So they put in an export restraint that only limited some 1.7 million vehicles into the US. And they said, we'll do that for a couple of years. So kind of give you guys time. And then we will also build manufacturing plants in the US. the U.S. So yeah. the very first one, I believe, was in Marysville, Ohio for mm -hmm. Honda. So, oh, really? so the Honda Accord was built and yeah. that was the first manufacturing plant from China in uh, in the U.S. So this is kind of a repeat. I think it's going to happen again. So BYD will end up probably building a plant in probably China. I'm uh, sorry, in Mexico or Canada or the U.S. Somewhere is going to build it. Just like we're talking about India. At some point, BYD will have to tie up with a local partner and they'll build a plant. They're still doing it. So BYD has partnered with Electra. Uh, from India to manufacture those buses. That's true. Here. But now, in, from a Canada perspective, they are not just keeping it to traditional EVs. They it is going to be any every trade that is happening with China. So I think it's also applicable to steel. It is also exactly. applicable to other minerals, and that is going to take effect from fifteenth of October. But in a way, this is in line with what you. EU has already sort of mandated as well, right? And US has also mandated a certain but uh, like increase in uh, import uh, duties that are there. But when India is like a, in a way very interesting because we in a way reduce our import duties. But the the caveat is you need to sort of invest you know, 4,000 crores here in India and then you can, you know, uh, avail that particular import duty. So that's, I think, a very interesting take that we are having. But still, uh, the influx of EVs, of Chinese EV, EVs in India is still not a lot. I think the barrier for entry for them is still quite high. I feel like the Indian ecosystem might benefit from having more uh, Chinese EVs over here. Of course, you know, if there's a certain percentage of localization or whatever, the net net from a tech perspective, I think the Indian ecosystem might really benefit from it. But what do you think? No, I think that's what the, the whole idea is. And that's what you, you when you see Tesla went to China and then because of that so many companies kind of sprung up out of that because you know they, they built the ecosystem I think the same thing needs to be done here you have all these car companies coming setting up a plan then you have that brain you know that, that entire brain trust of people that go from maybe you know company A to company B they take a little bit of knowledge and it just makes the entire ecosystem better that's the idea and I think that's what's missing right now you've got maybe only three four five large players but we need more and more you know and uh, it benefits everyone in the end but it's very very tough it's it's typical innovators dilemma if you're a large company you can't see you know down the future because you're worried mm. about your revenue stream coming today exactly not yeah. five years from now all in all i think it's it has been a great month yeah. for india uh not so great for canada or china <laughs> <laughs> definitely not <laughs> so i think that's about it uh, from episode two season two of what's happening see you guys in the next one sounds good take care Bye. Yeah.